Now the angle can be measured in degrees or radians. So you need to be familiar with both. So if you see a little circle on top, then you know the angle is in degrees. If you don't see that circle, then the angle is in radians. For example, if theta is equal to 2, then you know that is in radians. So this is 2 radians. So anytime you see a number without this little circle, it's radians. Now what is a radian exactly? What's the definition of a radian? A radian is basically the measure of the central angle of a circle where the arc length is equal to the radius of the circle. So let's draw a circle. Okay, that is a terrible circle. Let's do that one more time. So let's say this is the center of the circle. The radius is the distance between the center of the circle and any point on the circle. Now let's say if we draw the length of the radius but as an arc. Let's say that distance is also r. If we connect the center to the edge of that point, then that's also the radius. So whenever you have a situation like this, where the arc length is equal to r, and is the same as the radius of the circle, then the angle that forms is one radian. So this angle is one radian. So that's the definition of a radian. A radian is the angle that occurs whenever the arc length, which is basically this distance here, is equal to the radius. In fact, if you want to find the angle theta, you can divide the arc length, which is known as s, by the radius. And that will give you the angle in radians. So keep this in mind. Let's say this is r and this is r. And here's s, the arc length. So if we need to find the angle theta, simply divide the arc length by the radius. So let's say if we have a circle, and let's say the arc length is 12 centimeters. So that's the distance between these two points. Let's call it point A and point B. And let's say point C is the center of the circle. Now let's say that the radius of the circle is 6 centimeters. So that's the distance between the center and a point on the circle. What is the angle theta in radians? What is the angle? So to find the angle, it's the arc length divided by the radius. So it's 12 centimeters divided by 6 centimeters. And so this will give you 2, or 2 radians. Personally, I like to think of the radius as being the length per unit radian. I think of it as being 6 centimeters per radian. And that way you can see how the unit centimeters will cancel. And in the end, you should get radians. So that's how you could find the angle. Let's work on another example. So let's say the radius is 4 inches. And let's say the arc length, S, let's say S is equal to 16 inches. Calculate the angle theta as indicated in the drawing. So the angle theta is going to be s divided by r. So in this case, it's 16 inches divided by 4 inches per radian. So this will give you 4 radians. So now you know how to calculate the angle in radians if you're given the arc length and the radius. Now let's talk about how to convert angles from degrees to radians. So what you need to know is that, let's say if you have a circle, one full revolution of a circle is equal to 360 degrees, and that's equal to 2 pi radians. Now, if 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians, and if we divide both sides by 2, 
we can see that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. And this is the conversion factor that you want to use to convert from degrees to radians. So let's say if we have the angle 60 degrees and we want to convert it to radians. Here's what we need to do. Take your angle and multiply it by pi divided by 180. You want the unit degrees to cancel. So what's 60 divided by 80? For one thing, we can get rid of a 0, so it becomes 6 over 18. So we have 6 pi over 18, but we can write 18 as 6 times 3. And we can cancel a 6. So therefore, the final answer is pi over 3. So 60 degrees is equal to pi over 3 radians. Let's try another example. Convert 150 degrees into radians. Feel free to pause the video and try this problem. So just like before, we're going to multiply by pi divided by 180. So let's begin by getting rid of a 0. So now we have 15 pi divided by 18. 15 is 5 times 3. 18 is 6 times 3. So we can get rid of a 3. So therefore, the final answer is 5 pi divided by 6. Try these two examples. Convert negative 225 degrees into radians and also negative 30. So I'm going to start with negative 30. Let's multiply that by pi divided by 180. So once again, we can get rid of a 0. So this is going to be negative 3 pi. And 18, I'm going to write it as 6 times 3. So we can cancel a 3. So the final answer is going to be negative pi divided by 6. That's equal to negative 30 degrees. Now in this example, let's multiply negative 225 degrees by pi divided by 180. Now it's helpful to know that 225 is 45 times 5. And 180 is 45 times 4. So now we can cancel 45, which will give us a final answer of negative 5 pi divided by 4. So now you know how to convert angles from degrees to radians. And that's all you need to do, which is multiply by pi over 180. Now what about converting radians into degrees? So let's say if we have 2 pi over 3 radians. What should we do to convert this angle into degrees? Well, this time, instead of multiplying by pi over 180, we're going to multiply by 180 divided by pi. We need to flip it. Now, you want to write it in such a way that the pi letters cancel. So this is going to be 2 times 180 divided by 3. Now, 180 is 60 times 3. So we can get rid of 3. And so we're left with 2 times 60, which is 120 degrees. And so that's the answer. Let's try some more examples. Try this one. Convert 11 pi over 6 into degrees. So once again, let's multiply by 180 divided by pi. And let's cancel pi. Now we can write 180 as... 30 times 6. So let's get rid of 6. So we just got to multiply 11 times 30. 11 is basically 10 plus 1. And if we distribute 30 to it, 30 times 10 is 300. And 30 times 1 is 30. So our final answer is 330 degrees. Here are some examples that you can try. Convert negative 7 pi over 4 into degrees, and also negative 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to start with this one. Let's multiply by 180 divided by pi. 180 is the same as 90 times 2. So we can get rid of 2. And 3 times 90 is 270. So the final answer is negative 270 degrees. Now, what about negative 7 pi over 4? Well, let's do the same thing. Let's multiply by 180 over pi and cancel pi. 
Now keep in mind 180 is 45 times 4. So we can cancel 4. So now we need to multiply 45 times 7. So that's the same as 7 times 40 plus 5. Now 7 times 40, if 7 times 4 is 28, 7 times 40 is 280. 7 times 5 is 35. If we add 280 and 35, this is going to be 315. So the final answer is negative 315 degrees. Now for those of you who want access to my complete online trigonometry course, here's where you can find it. Uh, go to udemy.com. And then in the search box, you could just search for trigonometry. And you can see my course is basically the one with the black uh, background. And then here is it. I'm still adding more lectures, but here's what I have so far. Um, introduction into angles, drawn angles, converting degrees into radians, uh, linear speed, angular speed problems, arc length, uh, information on the unit circle, how to evaluate trigonometric functions using the unit circle, uh, right triangle trigonometry, things like Sokotoa, even you can have video quizzes as well, solving word problems like angle of elevation problems. And then you have the next section, graphing sine cosine functions, secant tangent, inverse trig functions, pretty much all the common stuff that you'll see in a typical uh, trigonometry course, even solving uh, bearings, verifying trigonometric identities. Uh, some in difference formulas, double angle, half angle, and some other things too. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to add some other things as well. So feel free to check it out when you get a chance. And uh, let's continue back to the video. Now you need to be able to draw angles in standard positions if it's given to you in radians. We've covered degrees already. So let's say if we have the angle pi over 4. How can we graph it in standard position? Well, for one thing, it might be helpful to convert this into degrees. 180 divided by 4 is 45 degrees. And you know 45 is between 0 and 90. So we're going to draw the ray right in the middle between those two. So therefore, this is how you graph the angle pi over 4. Let's try another example. 7 pi over 6. Where should we graph it? Well, let's begin by converting it in 2 degrees. 180 is 30 times 60. And 7 times 30 is 210. Now, 210 is between 180 and 270 but it's closer to 180, so it's right there. Therefore, this angle is 7 pi divided by 6. Try this one, negative pi over 6. So let's convert it to degrees first. 180 divided by 6 is 30. So this is 0, and this is negative 90. So negative 30 should be in this region, in quadrant 4. So this is negative 30 degrees. Now let's talk about some common angles that you need to know in radians and their locations. Let's start with pi over 4. So pi over 4 is located in quadrant 1. It's between 0 and 90. The next one that's similar to it that you need to know is 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 is 135. Pi over 4 is 45. So 45 times 3 is 135. In quadrant 3, the next angle is 5 pi over 4, which is 225. And quadrant 4 has the angle 7 pi over 4. 7 times 45 is 315. 
Now this angle here is 2 pi over 4. 2 pi over 4, it reduces to pi over 2. And whenever you see pi, remember pi is equal to 180. So 180 divided by 4 is 45. So that's how you can remember pi over 4 is 45. 3 pi over 4, 45 times 3, that's 135. 5 pi over 4, 5 times 45, that's 225, which is in quadrant uh, 5. Now the next one, 4 pi over 4, reduces to pi. And pi is 180. Here we have 6 pi over 4, which reduces to 3 pi over 2. So you won't hear 2 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, because they're reducible fractions. Just know where they're located and that the fact that they're going to reduce to pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, or pi. But these are the main ones you need to know. Pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Now the next angles you need to be familiar with is pi over 3. So pi over 3 is about 60 degrees. So this is uh, 1 pi over 3. And then 2 pi over 3 is in quadrant 2. So that's about 120. So remember, pi is 180. So pi divided by 3, 180 divided by 3, uh, that correlates to 60. So 2 pi over 3 is 60 times 2, which is 120. 3 pi over 3 simplifies to pi, which is 180. So you won't see 3 pi over 3, it just be pi. Next you have 4 pi over 3, which is 4 times 60, that's 240. And then 5 pi over 3, that's 5 times 60, which is 300. So in terms of pi over 3s, those are the common ones you'll see. 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. Next, we have pi over 6. So 1 pi over 6, which is 180 divided by 6, that's 30. And then we have uh, 5 pi over 6, that's 5 times 30, which is 150. And then 7 pi over 6, that's in quadrant 3. That's 7 times 30, which is 210. And finally, 11 pi over 6, which is 11 times 30, or 330. And don't forget the angles that are on the x and y axis. This is 0 degrees, pi over 2, which is 180 divided by 2, that's 90 degrees. Pi is 180, 3 pi over 2, that's 3 times pi over 2, which is 3 times 90, that's 270. So now you know where the common angles are located. And so you can easily place them in their appropriate location if you understand uh, everything that we just went over. So those are the common angles that you'll see uh, later in the unit circle. So just make sure you remember those positions.